talked a lot about sampling distributions and sampling error. We need to talk about sampling methods. And as I've told you before, the best way to get a representative sample is to choose a random sample. Choosing a random sample is much easier when we have a finite population around which we can draw a frame, we can list all of the elements, and we can choose from among those elements. But in the case of an infinite population, we need other, more elegant ways of doing this sampling so that we can get what will approximate a random sample. Now, the first of the ways that we might go about drawing a sample is called a stratified random sample. This is where we divide our population into groups, or strata, or layers, uh, within a department or a location, uh, age categories, industry type. Maybe in a school we have fourth graders, fifth graders, sixth graders. In any case, each element in the population, each individual, can belong to only one strata. So if you're in fourth grade, you cannot also be in sixth grade. We will randomly sample each stratum, choose which stratum, that becomes our random sample. So the best results are going to occur when the elements within each stratum are homogeneous, which means they're as much alike as possible. There are pros and cons to each of the sampling strategies that we could use. With stratified random sampling, as long as this, the strata are homogeneous, we're going to get pretty good estimators. It's going to give you the precision of simple random sampling and allow you to use a smaller sample size. The trade-off is non-sampling error if strata are not homogeneous. And I'm going to tell you more about non-sampling error coming up in just a little bit. The second approach that we can take is called cluster sampling. It looks a lot like what we've just discussed, except in this time, we divide our population into groups or clusters. We want to sample something in the city, and so we divide the city into blocks, into neighborhoods, and then we could randomly select a neighborhood, or two or three or six, to go to will sample within each of those neighborhoods. What we are assuming is that each cluster is heterogeneous. In other words, each cluster is different, and the differences within each cluster mirror the differences within the population. We have neighborhoods that are very much like the overall composition in the city. And if that is the case, then we're going to get a pretty good estimator from our cluster sampling. The pros here would be it's cost effective, especially when your clusters are close together. You can go from one neighborhood to the next. But it does require a larger sample size. So there's going to be a little more work, a little more cost than using a simple or a stratified random sampling. Systematic sampling is effective when you have a finite population. The way this would work, and for this example, I'll choose, uh, we are putting together the, the, the senior prom. And we want to know something about all of the seniors in the class. We want to choose a random sample. We would go about that by, first of all, getting our list, our frame, all of the seniors in the class. And then we would randomize that list. So everyone is no longer in alphabetical order. We've randomized the order in which they occur. Well, let's say that there are 400 seniors. And we want to draw a sample size of 40 to ask them some questions about the senior prom. We would start by dividing our sample size by our population size, 40 divided by 400, 0.10%. So then what we'll do is select a senior at random from among the first 10. And then we will choose every 10th senior following that individual. And this will give us the same properties as using a random sample. The advantage to this systematic sampling is that it's easier to identify than if we use simple random sampling. But the trade-off is that we must have that finite population that we can draw a frame of our population for our sampling purposes. Another common way that research gets done is convenience sampling. This means that instead of actually randomly sampling the population, we use a sample that is convenient to the researcher. So for instance, a, an instructor is teaching a psychology class, an intro to psychology class, and wants to use that group as a sample. The way that we tend to justify this to ourselves as researchers is say, 
Well, they, they signed up for the class randomly, right? I mean, this is almost like a cluster sample. These are the people that signed up randomly for my course, so they must be like all of the other students at the university. Well, that's what we tell ourselves, but by that methodology, convenient sampling, we do increase the rate of non-sampling error because this is a non-probability sampling technique. The reason it's used, the biggest advantage, it's quick and easy. We have these people who are already easily accessible and we can encourage them to participate in our study. However, it's impossible to know if our sample is representative and that might have implications for the conclusions that we draw from our sample. The last methodology that I want to talk about is called judgment sampling. And this is where we use experts to help us in selecting our sample. We find someone who is an expert on the subject matter and that person selects the elements of the population that he or she feels are most representative. So for instance, we want to sample uh, senators or judges and so we talk to someone who is a, a journalist who specializes and spends a lot of time with these individuals and we say, who should we talk to? And so we let our journalist expert help us in making that decision. This is also non-probability sampling. So the advantage, it's an easy way to select a sample. The trade-off, the quality of our sample, depends upon the quality of the judgment of the expert. What then are our best practices when choosing a sample? When possible, use probability sampling methods like simple random sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, or systematic random sampling. Statistical techniques are available to evaluate the goodness of fit between our sample and our population when we use probability sampling techniques. Non-probability sampling techniques cannot be evaluated this way when we use a convenient sample or a judgment sample. And those are the things to keep in mind as we're doing sampling.